So, I wanted to uh, take a moment to answer these questions. Uh, the following statements you make yourself, uh, commit yourself to answers, you know, true or false. The most common cause of upper GI bleed is malarivised tear. For every litre of blood loss that you estimate clinically, you will replace it with uh, 2 litres of crystalloids like normal saline or ringer lactate, true or false. In resuscitation, a 14 gauge 55 millimetre venflon is better than 14 gauge 45 millimeter venflon. The use of endoscopy to intervene and actively do some procedures to stop bleeding is needed only in 20 percent of all bleeders. Prophylactic IV antibiotics for 3 days saves lives in varicell bleeding. So, all these uh, 5 questions you can answer. Um, the information will come through the lecture and we will look at the same questions as a poster at the end of the session. We all know that uh, due to the aging population and widespread use of uh, medications like NSAIDs and uh, antithrombotics, uh, especially the newer oral anticoagulants which have no antidotes, uh, we are going to face the problem of acute upper GI bleed more and more in the coming years. Uh, to put the perspective, uh, for every 1000 adult population, there is uh, one bleeder per year. So, for a city like Chennai uh, with uh, 11 million population, we would expect uh, 11,000 patients presenting with acute upper GI bleed in a year. For any new admissions with upper GI bleed, the death rate will be around 10 percent. However, if already inpatient has an upper GI bleed episode, the mortality can be as high as 30 percent. It is slightly worrying that uh, the mortality is unchanged despite uh, advancements in therapy including endoscopic interventions, partly due to the aging population and significant comorbidity of these patients. Some basic facts, upper GI bleed is a commonest GI emergency. Uh, when we uh, attempt to treat these patients, at least 20 percent of the patients uh, have uh, initial failure to uh, achieve hemostasis or they bleed soon after initial hemostasis within that admission defined as re-bleeding. Uh, among these re-bleeders, uh, further interventions will be needed. So, around 2 to 10 percent of all bleeders will need intervention with uh, angiogram and coil or embolization or uh, surgical um, procedures to stop the bleeding. By definition, uh, an upper GI bleed is uh, any bleed proximal to the jejunum, but practically any uh, bleed that can be identified with an upper GI endoscope, which is uh, conventionally uh, the esophagus, the stomach which is absent here and up to the middle part of the second duodenum. So, anatomically this is the ligament of treats and any bleed that happens uh, before this proximal to the ligament of treats is called upper GI bleed. But for practical purposes, any bleed which happens that can be identified uh, within the reach of the upper GI endoscopy, which is normally up to the second port of duodenum. Anything uh, beyond this is called a mid gut or small bowel bleed or a lower GI bleed if it is uh, in the colon. So, upper GI bleed is obviously uh, four times more common than the lower GI bleed. It presents as a melina, which is altered dark blood. Uh, in pass through the rectum um, in 20 percent, it is um, hematemesis in 30 percent and half of the patients will have both uh, melina and hematemesis. So, focusing on the learning outcomes, let us uh, look at the main causes. Uh, 